Uganda, like the rest of the world, is grappling with a growing public health crisis, antimicrobial resistance, commonly known as drug resistance. Take malaria, for instance. Once easily treated, the disease is becoming increasingly difficult to manage as parasites develop resistance to many of the medications available today. Ugandans buy averagely seven tablets out of 24, one third of the treatment. Health experts like Dr. Sauda Namubiru and her colleagues at the Uganda National Health Laboratories and Diagnostic Services warn that if misuse of medications continues unchecked, the consequences could be dire. But how do scientists arrive at these conclusions? Dr. Namubiru, a microbiologist, explains. When we get urine, we put it on this plate and we see that we, we put it in an incubator and give it warmth. All these plates you see have something that is as if lines. So those are different bacteria that have grown. Even here you see small dots which are the different bacteria that have grown. So after doing this, we have identified bacteria has grown in urine, but we don't know is it a bacteria called, for example, typhoid bacteria, or is it the one for syphilis, or is it the one that causes pneumonia? We don't know which one. So after identifying that you have the bacteria that causes typhoid, now we want to know which drugs can be used to, te to treat this typhoid. And again, that is done in the laboratory. So now we again get our plate that has the food for the bacteria. We put the bacteria on because we want to know what drug can be used to test treat that bacteria. And then we put different drugs. As you can see, you see round things. Those are the drugs. Naturally, if the drug is, is able to treat that bacteria or that germ, it would clear from your body. So in the same vein, here we see, is there clearance around the, the, the drug? If there's clearance, how big is it? And then we compare to the standard and say, this drug can treat this person. This one, there is nothing, there is no clearance. And this is just one of the drugs that we use, a common drug called septrin. So then we see that, okay, there is no clearance. So what does that mean? This bacteria is already uh, resistant. It cannot be treated by this drug. Then we make a report, and that is the report that we give to the doctor. And then the doctor can know, okay, from the drug list that they've tested in the laboratory, I can use this, I can't use this. So that is why microbiology testing, or what we call culture and sensitivity, is very important. Culture is to grow the bacteria. Sensitivity is to know which drugs can treat that bacteria. It's very important in ensuring that we have proper use of drugs. She emphasizes that one of their biggest concerns is that many antibacterial treatments are losing effectiveness. We have a bacteria called E. coli, and that is one of the commonest bacteria that we find in urine, and the resistance is showing us that it is resisting most of the drugs that we are using in our clinical setting. At least you find resistance to most of these, especially things like uh, cotrimoxazole, which is septrin, things like cipro, the drugs like amoxil, we are seeing a lot of resistance to such common drugs. And even these, uh, some drugs which we get in hospital when we are hospitalized, where we put a cannula and we have a drug called SAFE, people commonly call it SAFE, we call it SAFE triaxone, we are seeing resistance to many of those drugs. Yes, then for the wound infections, for example, we have many organisms that cause wound infections and they're also showing a lot of resistance. But we are seeing uh, germs like Pseudomonas, germs like uh, Staphylococcus, developing resistance that is very worrying to most of the common drugs. With no immediate breakthroughs in developing new, stronger antibiotics, Dr. Namoviru urges responsible use of medicines and insists that proper laboratory diagnosis should be the standard before treatment is prescribed. Poor use of drugs. Poor use, I mean, using the, right, the wrong drug 
for the wrong reasons, that is the commonest, you have a cough and then you go and buy amoxil because you don't know whether this cough is caused by bacteria or virus and amoxil treats bacteria, but most coughs are caused by virus, not completing doses, sharing drugs with animals, you get uh, maybe chloramphenico and you give it to your birds, so overuse makes these drugs, these germs uh, gain ability to resist the drugs. For the common man, let us make sure we are using the drugs for the right reason. And how we can do that is make sure you seek care from a qualified healthcare provider. Don't just go and say, let me buy a Moxil, let me buy Cipro. And even when you go to your qualified healthcare provider, always ask for a test and treat approach. Doctor, how about your first test which bacteria you have? When they say you have bacteria infection, ask them which bacteria. Dr. Isaac Sewanyana, the director of labs at the Uganda National Health Laboratory and Diagnostic Services, says they are working to empower laboratories across the country, ensuring they have the right tools and expertise to diagnose diseases accurately. Uh, from regional referral hospitals to health center threes, we coordinate the lab services we ensure that these labs have supplies for diagnostics. We ensure that their uh, laboratory uh, staff are uh, well equipped uh, with the right skills uh, to do their job. So we do a lot of mentorship, support supervision and mentorship. Yeah. And we also provide uh, quality assurance and also support the quality management systems. And uh, in Uganda, in the region, we, ha we are one of the countries with the highest number of labs that have received international accreditation. However, for this to be sustainable, adequate human resources and funding are crucial in maintaining high quality laboratory services. Because uh, always considering the volumes of work and the numbers, uh, we've always had shortages in human resource, but we go around it innovatively. Like for example, in this lab, we're able to run uh, 8,000 tests every single day using fewer staff, but we have acquired highly automated systems. Yeah, so we have embraced digitalization and we have embraced robotics Uganda's National Health Laboratories and Diagnostic Services, internationally accredited since 2007, continues to serve as a training and research hub for many countries across Africa, a crucial frontline in the fight against antimicrobial resistance. Walter Mwesije, NTV. <music>